This was a couple of software engineers who put this in for whatever reasons. How much code is in a modern car? How many lines of code in a, and not a Tesla, yeah, Tesla's way over the top, just a normal old modern car. How many lines of code are in that? It's over a hundred million. You get into your car, you start to drive it, there's a hundred million lines of code executing in that car. Most of it, of course, is in the entertainment system and the GPS system and all that nonsense, but there's a fair bit of code running in the engine. When you put your foot on the brake, do you believe that there's a cable that runs from the brake pedal to the calipers that squeeze on the disc? Or do you realize that there are if statements in the way? And who wrote those if statements? There are dozens of people who have died in automobile accidents because the software that controlled the brakes and the accelerator failed for some stupid reason. You and I are killing people. When the CEO of Volkswagen North America testified before the American Congress about why the software in Volkswagens was cheating the environmental protection machines in California. And the Congress asked that CEO, how could you have let this happen? And the CEO answered, and I quote, Two answers to this. Um, first of all, the investigations are ongoing, but this was not a corporate decision from my point of view. To my best knowledge today, the corporation in no board meeting or no supervisory board meeting has authorized this, but this was a couple of software engineers who put this in for whatever reasons. It was just a couple of software developers who did this for whatever reason. Unquote. Now he was right. It was a couple of software developers who did it, although it was not for some reason. They knew exactly why they were doing it. By the way, those software developers are in jail now, as they should be. So when the event occurs and the politicians rise up and say, we got to do something about these programmers, they're out of control. And they point their fingers at us and they say, okay, how could you have let this happen? We'd better have an answer for them. Because if our answer is, you know, my boss told me we had to get it done by Tuesday. If that is our answer, then the politicians of the world will hang their heads in disappointment and, and shame and, they will, and disgust. And they will do the one thing that we don't ever want them to do. They will legislate. They will regulate. And they will tell us what languages we can use and what platforms we have to write on and what courses we have to take and what books we have to read, what processes we have to follow and what signatures we have to get and we will all become civil servants. I would like to avoid this. So how do you avoid it? Well, you get there first. You get there first by establishing the ethics of software development. What do we value? What is it that a software developer holds dear? And one of those things had better be the cleanliness of code. Uh, Poser 4, or oh, Poser 5. Um, at some level, the style becomes a substance. The little things matter in code for a very simple reason. That's how you create large systems. When people say, don't worry about that, it's just details, they forget what software is. Software is just details. There really is nothing else. If you can find something else, I'd like to see it, because that's what real software is. It's lots of details put together by people to do a particular purpose. It's just details. There's no physical stuff there. It is just the details. And we create large things out of smaller things that are the same type of thing. In a building, we don't create big buildings out of little buildings. With bricks, we don't create big bricks out of smaller bricks. But in software, we create large software out of smaller pieces of software, and we create those smaller pieces out of smaller pieces still. It's turtles all the way down. It, therefore, the stuff you do down here, when you repeat it, ultimately becomes your architecture.
code in the language of the domain. Now, sometimes people will, will do this and they'll say, look, I, I'm, I'm looking here, I've got very clear identifiers, portfolio IDs by trader ID, trader, key, portfolio, yeah. The only abbreviation in there is a real world abbreviation, ID. That's not even a programmer abbreviation. And yet it's not entirely clear what the purpose of this condition is. Maybe we should put a comment in. Or maybe there's a different way of describing it. We've got a missing abstraction. And one of that's a very common thing, it's missing abstraction. It's not the code, it's not that the code does anything wrong. It's it just doesn't communicate. It doesn't fulfill the communication needs of its users. On the other hand, if Trader can view portfolio, it does. It's much clearer. That's a permission check. It's not just a look up in a map of maps. That's a technical expression of what is going on. But that's not what it means. What it means is whether we're trying to find out, can this trader view this portfolio? The fact that you got it working is only half the job. Once the code works, that's when you have to clean it. No one writes clean code first. Nobody does. Because it's just too hard to get code to work. So once the code works, it will be a mess. Human beings do not think in nice straight lines. They don't think in if statements and while loops. They cannot foresee the entire algorithm. So we piece the thing together and we cobble it together with wire and scotch tape and then it suddenly works and we're not quite sure why. And that's the moment when you say, all right, now I need to clean it. How much time do you invest in cleaning it? Roughly the same amount of time it took you to write it. And that's the problem. Nobody wants to put that effort in because they think they're done when it works. You're not done when it works. You're done when it's right. Why are we so slow? Why are programmers so slow? Now, here's the thing that happens to software teams, right? They start out fast. They start out with a beautiful design, and they start out lovely, and they're fast, and they write features, and everything's working great. But they make a mess. Because they want to go fast. They make a mess. And as they make a mess, as the mess builds, the team gets slower and slower and slower until they bottom out at 1% of their original productivity. When I was learning C back in 1989, Rob Pike wrote this notes on C. Now, I, I, I notes on programming in C, and I, uh, it's interesting because half of his guidelines are very specifically C related, and some of them have changed with time. But his guideline on comments is spot on. A delicate matter requiring taste and judgment. I tend to err on the side of eliminating comments for several reasons. First, if the code is clear and uses good type names and variable names, it should explain itself. Yeah. Second, comments aren't checked by the compiler. This is an important consideration. You have two audiences. You have the compiler and you have other human beings. My experience suggests that other human beings don't read comments and compilers don't read comments. So who are you writing them for? Okay. Comments are the last thing people will look at when everything has gone wrong. It's like getting a new gadget. The last thing you're going to do is actually look at the instructions. You never look at the instructions. It's like, you should look at the instructions, Kevlin. No, 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 I can work this one out. And when it's all gone wrong, then you look at the instructions. Only to discover that they're wrong. There's no guarantee they're right. A misleading comment can be very confusing. Third, the issue of typography. Comments clutter code, they create noise. When it comes to comments, there's often this idea, you know what, the code might not be readable. The code might not be readable. Why? Because the programmer didn't express themselves. Oh, okay, you should get the programmer to write comments then. The same programmer that could not express themselves in the programming language is now going to be asked to express themselves again using a natural language. I don't think it's necessarily going to work. <laughs>